And hello again. Sorry guys, we had some technical difficulties. So we're going to start the live once again. And I have no idea how we got interrupted and at which point, but I'm pretty sure David is going to join us once again. And we're going to, hi Manuel, we're going to continue our conversation about all types of mortgages and the lack of inventory on the market and as well as uh, giving you the options what kind of mortgages you can currently apply for and what kind of mortgages you might find very useful in the situation right now for example if you wanted to build your own home or if you wanted to remodel your home your existing home and you were in need of the funds Remember, even with the current mortgage interest rates, those are still the better, much better rates than the your credit card rates. Hmm. Trying to, trying to have David join us. There we go. All right. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Not sure. Not sure how we how we got disconnected, but <laughs> let's go back into it. And I'm not sure at which moment, but I would like to continue the conversation with you about all the possible loans that we have right now that can help our clients and listeners actually um, get their homes. And right now, like. I was talking about what is the biggest motivation factor for our clients to change, like, to change their uh, living conditions. And some of the biggest factors are the expansion of the family. Some people have their parents moving in. Some people have uh, uh, new kids that are coming into the family. And they're looking at their current living conditions and they're thinking, oh, my God, we can't... Uh, like we can't really afford to go and buy a new house or, you know, like we would like to add to a current house. And what are the solutions that we can offer to those people who are either not finding that very house on the market because of the lack of the inventory or because of the prices, you know, like because the the most common thing that we face right now is that the house that I like is worse Two million dollars. Uh, but something is going on. David, can you hear me? I am, yeah, all ears. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. I think you're so, right. it's fine. Let me see if we're getting back to it. If I can get the light back or no. I don't think so. <laughs> It's okay. I don't think I can. Yes. Sorry, guys. Right? So, anyways, we're getting like we're getting a lot of um, we're getting a lot of our clients who are. I think my is my video super slow. No, no, <laughs> no. No, you're fine. Okay. You're fine. Okay. So we get a lot of clients who are looking at the homes and they're saying, "Oh, you know, we're." Um, now, the house that we like is worth too much money or the payment is going to be too high for the house that I want. If I have the opportunity to buy a piece of land and actually build the house that I want, I would be much more happy. But until now, it was almost impossible to get the loan to build the house unless you were, um, unless you were were in the construction to get a construction loan. David, do you have a solution for us yes. in this situation? Yes, yes, uh, there are uh, construction loans specifically for people that are looking to build their own homes. And um, construction loans typically require you to be quite well off in a sense, well, 20% down payment. You have to own the land and, uh, and many options. Um, quite a bit of upfront investment, if you will.
Can uh, you lots of please give us more details on you have to own the <clears throat> land so you cannot finance land with that loan or uh, if, or you have to be the land owner up front? If you finance the land and you're going to have to put 20, 25% down for the construction loan itself, typically land is owned and land is pledged as the down payment. So you don't put any money down payment for the loan. So the construction loan itself requires 20 to 25% down depending on the lender. Um, and uh, a, lot of, <clears throat> a lot of times the construction loans that I have been involved with, the land has been pledged as the down payment. Interesting. And uh, are, those, are those like regular conventional loans or those are the special loans where we have different loan limits and what are the interest rates that we're looking at? Construction loans are not conventional loans. Um, however, to add a layer of complication, one of our lenders does have a conventional a loan that the limit is the conventional loan, but you only get to put 5% down instead of 20. Yes, it is very exciting. I haven't done a single one, by the way, because building a house is not not that prevalent it's in not Las Vegas. the easiest thing <clears throat> and there are a lot of uh, there, there are a lot of moving parts like getting a loan is one thing like getting a loan is complicated enough to begin with but when we're talking about a construction loan then you you add on another level of complications uh, as the uh, as the getting the construction on top of it and talking about the construction david is it um do we have to use a licensed contractor or can we do it as a uh, owner built? Not only do you need a licensed contractor, your contractor must have experience already building ground up real estate houses. If your contractor is someone that's been doing renovation only, remodels or flips, that contractor is not gonna quite cut for that. So, Here's what the most important thing you need to know about construction loans, besides the down payment and the interest rates, the, the banal, right? What you need to understand is before you apply for the loan, the bank expects you to have all the licensing in place. Uh, this means that if you have a piece of dirt, a plot of land that you want to build on, they expect you to have all the county permits, the sewer, the water, the, all of those permits. That goes into your initial package for the application, along with your contractor uh, application. So the uh, how lender, about the the, uh, how about the blueprints and the building plans? Like, do you, are you supposed to have architectural plans with it? That'll that'll come in. That's not that's not a part of your initial application package. Be the initial application package is going to require you to make, to uh, submit all the uh, the sewer, the water, the, the utilities, basically the permitted. Make mm -hmm. sure that you're fully permitted to start the construction. If you're not permitted to start the construction, they're not even going to look at your application and. The, the second and most important thing is to they need to vet your contractor and your contractor has to submit certain properties and they're going to go through the, to the county website make sure the contractor has in fact built those houses before they and has the, the proper for licensing correct has all the them, proper licensing yeah. insurance all that of course well david uh, building is never a quick thing and building is usually like even when we buy from the new home builder who seems to have you know like who seems to have it all under their belt right. and they're popping out those new homes like every three months but building is never on time so is there a time limit how long does the person has to uh like how long is the time to actually <clears throat> complete the construction well obviously everyone's motivated to complete the construction as, as quickly as possible. The minimum construction term is 12 months that I have seen across with many lenders that do construction loans. I have seen some that go up to 18 months, uh, but that's gonna be between, like I said, year, year and a half. Um, I'm pretty sure you're gonna, if you have everything in place, you're gonna try to finish sooner. So how how do we define the uh, the final amount of the loan? Because obviously we can uh, we can build two absolutely identical houses as far as the square footage is going to go, 
but uh, we would actually through the finishes we can have the price range you know by like three three hundred thousand dollars easily between the two totally identical homes as far as the layout goes and the square footage how does uh, how does that affect the loan amount like if I wanted to do excessive upgrades so uh, t two things that are important to the bank to start the process in the beginning is going to be the full spec uh, sheet. Uh, basically, they're going to expect this full breakdown of cost from the contractor. They have special people that are experienced in this. The construction department is usually a very different department that will go through that and they will get um, uh, an appraisal. Uh, done uh, to understand what the value will be in the future. So the bank is going to want to have an idea what this unit, this property will be worth in the future when the, the house is built. So, the, the, you know, they want to make sure in the beginning that they're getting into something that will have the value. And um, you and I know that most of the cost is in finishing really not in the cement and the dirt so that's going to matter as well so that the, they have to rely heavily on the contractors uh breakdown of cost and so for that reason those of you guys who apply for this such a for this kind of the loan i would tell you that one of the things that you have to be very careful with is that if you're looking for a state of art or one of a kind like building your special home and you're looking for outrageous amounts of upgrades this might not uh this might not be the best loan and the best route to take because uh, you are still subject to appraisal and when we're talking about being subject to appraisal the appraisers especially when they have not seen the house when the house is not built yet so they don't have they can go into your head and imagine what it's going to look like even if you have the best of the renderings it will be very hard for the appraiser to justify the price if it is somehow going to be higher than the price in the neighborhood also if let's say if you are inheriting a piece of land through your family or you're getting this piece of land really cheap because it is in some uh, like let's say in some older neighborhood where the homes are cheap be aware that those like that community that area is going to affect the appraisal the, the appraisal of your future home and nobody is going to finance you if the average price in the neighborhood is like three hundred thousand dollars nobody's going to approve the loan for five hundred thousand dollars or six hundred thousand dollars if your entire neighborhood is going for three hundred thousand like this is the, like the same rules still apply am i correct david well, yes, yes, but uh, one of the things that was very revealing to me, shocking to me, is you could have a 6,000 square foot house that are that's being sold for $2 million. You could have a 6,000 square foot house that's being sold for $5 million or $7 million. So really, it really depends on the quality of the finishing or what materials are used. Um, so uh, again, the, the, most of the work, in my opinion, for the construction mortgages is done up front. Uh, so you do make sure that, well, you also wanna make sure that uh, you don't lose anything. You come out ahead once you're done. And, and um, yeah, so lots of preparation up front. What about the loan limits? <clears throat> So uh, it, it depends on the bank. Again, construction loans are not a government loan that are cookie cutter across every lender, every bank. Uh, you're going to have one of the banks that comes to mind. They have a up to $1.5 million loan, and that's easier to qualify for. And they have a, a, another one that's $1.5 to $5 million construction loan. And that's that, that requires more down payment. Don't ask me details, but uh, uh, again, I have all sorts of products. It just uh, depends on what you're looking for. So, now, David, and let's say if I found a house that actually in the need of the extensive renovation, let's say I found a beat up house, but I really love the neighborhood and the house is cheap if I could only, only repair it, but the roof is leaking, it needs the new AC, and I know it's not going to pass the appraisal, you know, like in the current condition. 
is there a loan, is there a product that I can possibly go through or go with and get this house? If I understand that I could probably like uh, revamp this house and uh, have a nice little home for myself, but I don't really have the cash to spend on all of that uh, upgrades and renovations. So there are renovation programs specifically um, that FHA has. It's called FHA 203K, and Fannie Mae has Fannie Home Style Renovation, and this is specifically for the property that will not pass appraisal. And the beauty of these programs is you can buy a property that it does not cut the the muster, so to speak. It's not going to get financed with a regular mortgage, but it also finances the renovation costs as well. So you you basically get two loans into one. Um, and the the FHA two hundred three has two, just to kind of complicate mm -hmm. your life a little bit it's got the full renovation and it's got the limited limited is up to up to thirty five thousand dollars that's nothing structural maybe cosmetic that you can get it's much easier to qualify for and the full uh is when you really seriously add a roof change a roof add square footage add rooms uh it's a whole different process so there are two types of uh, fha 203k uh, limited in the full. Limited is uh, has a lower uh, uh, lower loan limits, and it like the level of renovation that you can uh, that you can apply it to actually should be that low that you should be able to occupy the property during the renovation. That's one of the uh, if. Yeah, the, the property has to be habitable during the renovation. So if you guys are looking to take off the roof in the months of January and you live somewhere in Illinois, <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen for you guys. But um, the full FHA, is that true that the full FHA, you can even apply to... Hmm. Hello. Hello there. Is, is it true that with the full FHA 203K, you can even apply some of the loan proceeds to, uh, to pay for the rental while you're renovating the house? Uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, it's been a while since I did one. Alexandra, please don't put me on the, on the spot okay. here. I'm not. Because that, this is one of the things, you know, like this is one of the things that I read that it covers. Uh -huh. And uh, it covers, yeah, it covers the rental for the time of the renovation, but obviously does have a cap. And once again, if we're talking about the FHA loan or the Fannie Mae renovation, it means they're still subject to your um, to the loan limits for the county that you live in. Correct. I, I do know those lo renovation limits uh, loans are going to last uh, uh, much shorter. They're going to be between four and six months. You're not getting twelve months of. So yeah, um, uh, what to remember for before you go into anything like that is the ARV, which is after repair value, is very important before the bank will lend, lend you any money. They want to make sure again that the the value will be there at the end once you're done with what you're done. The process is similar. They're going to look at your contractor. They're going to look at the scope of work, make sure that how much you want to spend and how much you actually want to spend and finance uh, will get you to the value that your ARV. Yes. And one of the things that I also wanted to pay our listeners attention to, and I really wanted to to stress on. So let's say I live in the house and some of the major systems are going out. Let's say my AC is going out and my roof is out. I really don't have those, let's say the contractor's estimate is $40,000 for the things that I need to repair, you know, like maybe 60. Let's, let's make it, let's make it full 80. Let's make it full 80. Um, I live in the house. I have the equity in the house. Can I, I can I come to you and ask you to help me out with the 203K 
as a refinance product, can I refinance the house where I already live in uh, right now with the 203K? You should be able to, but that's unnecessary. Complicating things, if you do have the equity, you're already living in the house, I'm assuming you have some equity, you can just apply for a HELOC because most HELOCs do not require an appraisal because you know your fear is that it's not going to pass an appraisal you may as well get a heloc heloc is as a desktop underwriter they get the value of the property online so you can get a heloc in two three weeks and and apply and do this and i i think it'd be an easier quicker cheaper uh fix for your problem so i would have two options i will i can do the heloc or i can do 203k absolutely now the two uh, once again, if we're doing, if we're talking about two or three K or Fannie Mae refinance, uh, uh, what is it called properly? Fannie Mae home style. Ha home Fannie Mae style. home style. Yeah. Uh, can I complete the? Uh, can I complete the renovation myself or the repairs myself? Do you need a contractor. Um, uh, I, I don't. I'm not aware of. No, you need a licensed contractor for sure. So unless I'm the licensed contractor who can qualify to for with the uh, Fannie Mae or with the FHA, they will not allow me to do the DUI project, correct? I believe so, yes. I would have to look into that, but I'm pretty sure. I actually printed the whole guideline here. I just haven't had the time to look. But uh, I'm pretty sure you would have to uh, have some kind of oh. licensing because, again, you're working with code certain things have to pass the clark county oh um, the county is going to come and check the quality of your construction so it, it it's not like painting a wall oh so. absolutely yes it's not going to be like you you can get the money you know like you can get the money like pocket the money and uh and actually uh the money like is uh, uh, yes uh, put some uh you know like put some mickey mouse what is called uh work that's not going to happen but i do have one of my clients she actually does have the uh, contractor license she like but because this is what she does for a living and uh she's been uh buying the uh fourplexes right. with the 203 uh with the 203 uh, uh -huh. Okay, FHA loans. So, can we talk about that? So, can we buy? Can we apply that loan to the multi-unit dwelling? Yes, you can. Absolutely. So, one, two, you three, and should. four units. That is that is still the single-family residence. It is considered a single-family residence, even if you were living in the fourplex. Obviously, two hundred four k. This is not for the investors. This is for the owner occupants. Correct. 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 Yeah, you're not. You must live in one of the units. Uh, I think four units will make more sense for you to do because it makes sense that you live in one unit and renovate the others, and you can probably move into the other one. You're probably going to get more, more return for that. You will have help because maybe one or two units are being rented, or you will rent in the future. So, doing something like that on a on a multi unit up to four units uh, is is a lot more interesting, in my opinion. And David, another question is like, so the renovation can take up some time. So I need to, I need to buy the property. So I buy it, let's say I buy it today, but my renovation is not going to be finished until six months from now. What happens to my payments? How do I make the payments? Do I start making the payments from the Absolutely. day one on the full amount of the loan? Like, how does it work? So you start making the payments on the purchase price of the loan and uh the construction loan again is not dispersed out to you immediately it's going to be dispersed out to you in stages so uh the construction loan uh, payment is going to be added on but uh basically it's um uh, uh yeah so your initial payment is going to be for the purchase price of the property only now, and I would like for us to make a note for those of you guys who are looking to get this loan, like the payments, like if you're using this construction loan, just know that the payments are not actually dispersed to you as an individual. The, the payments are going to be dispersed to the construction company that does the construction. So there is no, uh, there is no gray area of 
you receiving $10,000 and giving, you know, like a payment of $10,000 and negotiating with the contractor to, to, yes, to, you know, like to take six. Though. So there's no room for that. The payment is, uh, uh, is dispersed directly to the contractor. And uh, obviously the contractor does have to qualify with the Fannie Mae or the FHA. And they all always have to have all the proper licensing in place to receive that payment and all obviously at the before the i believe that before the last payment is uh, dispersed the uh, the second appraisal is done correct the uh, new home value like the, the, the final just value yes because the appraiser also has to inspect the living conditions the yes the final inspection it's not the second appraisal, it's the final inspection, but yes, you're right, it, it must be completed. Now the appraiser is gonna be involved throughout the process because they, they also verify the stages of the property. Um, the bank relies on the appraiser's uh, verification before they release more money throughout the stages. So for those of our folks who are watching and who are not sure that they are finding the product on the market, like the house on the market that they want, they still can come to you and uh, if they have the beat up home that requires ex extensive uh, updates and repairs, they can possibly go for the 203 um, uh, FHA 203K and they can go for the Fannie Mae, I'm blacking home out. Style. Fannie Mae, re oh, home Fannie Mae home style. Fannie Mae home style is the equivalent of the. It is the conventional loan, correct? Correct. correct. So correct. it does have, have a little bit higher loan limit. Seven hundred and twenty-six thousand. That's correct. Yes. So, so this is one of the other things that I would like for everybody to remember. If you're looking for the house that is going to uh, to worth like six hundred fifty thousand dollars after the renovation, you are subject to the Fannie Mae. You're not going to you're not going to qualify for FHA because you're just over the FHA limit. If it is a single unit dwelling, if we're talking about the fourplex, you might fit in. Correct. With that, uh, with that amount. Yes, mm -hmm. you should. You should. And if if this is something that you guys are looking for, make sure that you have a licensed contractor that you can trust who is fully on board with you, because it is uh, it is not an easy process. It is quite a complicated process, and it requires a lot of paperwork which we know the contractors are not the best at they're they're great in uh, being handy and doing the work on the spot but they're not in the big fans the biggest fans of doing the paperwork so make sure that the contractor that you are going to cooperate with is either a has already done this type of work and they're fully aware of what it takes to work with uh, Fannie Mae or FHA and the entire paperwork that needs to be uh, that needs to be submitted or number two that the contractor is actually willing to go through those hurdles because the last thing that you want to happen is if your contractor in the middle of the road your contractor tells you you know what we're tired of them asking us for this and that we're tired of filing the paperwork we're spending more time on filing the paperwork work than doing the work we're out we're quit so that is not what you want to happen in this process and that would probably ruin your loan or make it extremely complicated to finish also David what is your product called for those who actually have a have the land to build on like for from scratch. What is it called? Is this just the construction loan? That would loan? be a ground up construction loan, yeah. Yeah, and it depends. <clears throat> now, most ground up construction loans that we have and offer are for people that are, again, applying for themselves, okay? So uh, I do have a couple of relationships with lenders that will allow specifically the builder uh, build for themselves. I have this client that's actually, we're starting his loan, he's building, for him not not to live in but for the purposes of resale 
and he is extremely smart. He started his career by flipping properties. He knows that very well. He bought several parcels of land. He spent months in getting all this land, this specific land uh, licensed with all and permitted with utilities. Now he's starting the construction for these. And once the construction is underway for this property, he's gonna start working for licensing the utilities for the other parcels. And you know, he's he's slowly becoming bigger and planning on how to become a big builder. I'm, I'm so did I hear you correctly that this uh, this construction loan it doesn't have to be owner occupied. It can be it could be an investor loan. The ones that you have been mentioning have to be owner occupied. I have specifically for investors as well i just wanted to mention if anyone's ever interested in building a house for the purpose of resale so can you tell us about the uh terms of that loan because i think that is a very interesting product that our listeners should know about yes absolutely there are uh it's called spec financing when you hear spec it means the builder uh, I don't care if it's KB Homes or Richmond American. It basically, or sometimes they use their own money, sometimes they finance. And basically, you buy the land with the purpose of building something that you're going to resell in the future. SPEC. And uh, how much down does it require? That requires, this specific case requires 30% down, which the land will be the 30 percent down will serve as the 30 percent down because it's ready and paid off interesting and is it a 30-year fixed or no like what is the term of those loans because if we're talking about the resale it, it's got to be a short-term loan uh, no, it's a, the amortization is going to be long, but it's a, it's a 12 month interest only loan. So you get 12 months, uh, you'll be able to uh, pay extra to extend it. But basically it's a 12 month interest only for the construction purposes only. And I'm sorry that I'm not looking into the camera okay. because okay. I'm, okay. I'm learning something new through this podcast you know like it's not only it's not only for our listeners it's for me as, as well so i'm learning something new i'm making my notes Call on me, the business. <laughs> i know first i'm gonna call you and then i'm gonna call uh, several of my clients who are actually general contractors and who are looking to uh to, uh, to build on the land yeah as long as they have have the land and land is fully permitted if they have uh, experience ground up if they don't have experience ground up they would probably have to associate themselves with another contractor that's already building get their name their company name involved in the process so they kind of piggyback on that experience oh wonderful Uh, any cap on the loan amount? Not that I'm aware of. We're looking for a, a very small four hundred thousand dollar loan for this property specifically. So, not, not the, I apologize. Eight hundred thousand dollars. Eight hundred uh, yeah. loan. But uh, I'm pretty sure with the proper down payment and strength in your bank statement, there's going to be some reserves acquired. Um, I just don't want to turn around, but the, you know the details are in my email. But yeah, uh, I, call me. That's wonderful. That is, um, I'm actually glad that we have this conversation because this is the product. Like I have not heard of this product before and uh, I am willing to learn more because there's still a lot of construction going on and we know, we know that um, it is not going to change. Like we, we have the general shortage of the inventory and our shortage of the inventory has been uh, due to the uh, um, due to the low amount of new home construction ever since 2015 
we were depleted of the construction. And David, do you think that, do you, do you know of any science that the big guys actually believe that the new home construction is going to thrive? Well, yeah. Yes, new home. Cons the if you look at the labor market, new home builders were the ones that actually the biggest hiring segment in the industry. They hired the most amount. There have been lots of permits throughout the country applied for new home building. So new home building is thriving versus other sectors of the economy where hiring or actually are shrinking as far as unemployment goes. Um, and new home building is uh, thriving. And I think that will be the case for the next decade. That's not going to change anytime soon. And, you know, Warren Buffett invested in three very large uh, home builders. I sent you the And I believe so. he invested over, what was the number? Five, 500 or $800 million? Five, five, 800 million with, was it D.R. Horton? And there were two others. Yes. It was... Yeah. Horton, it was Lennar, and it was NRV. NRV is not the builder that works uh, in Nevada, but now Dior Horton and Lennar actually do work here in Nevada. For those of you guys who are not familiar, Dior Horton is the is a spec home builder. So this is the type of the builder where they build the house and then they sell it. So they do not need the funding up front. So they are selling the house. They're, they, those are quick to close homes where you don't get to choose the options. So you just buy what you have and they're usually very like basic options. So everybody's home is going to look the same. And Lenar is the option builder. This is where you buy the uh, Base, base model, and then you do have the choice of, uh, of putting your upgrades. However, it takes uh, six to nine months to finish the house. So it is once again looking into the future. And uh, when you guys are looking into the future, be aware of the interest rates that actually change. So, and this this is like piggybacking from our previous conversation when we got interrupted. If you guys are signing up for this uh, long road, whenever you're entering into the contract today and your contract is actually going to be fully executed or your closing is eight to nine months from now, you have to be very, very careful and you have to uh, feel very stable with your job position, with your employment, with your income, and with the market. I don't know. Like, I never feel comfortable with the market, <laughs> especially lately after everything we've been through for the last, I would say, five years. I cannot say that I'm 100% confident with the market. Neither can I say that I'm confident with the interest rates, where they're going. Yeah, well... We're not very accurate in our predictions, are we? Uh, yeah, I think right David, I think six months to a year. I think that I think that um, it's not about you know like, and I wouldn't want to put myself or you on the spot trying to predict the interest rate. And I think that this is not our goal. And guys, please do not take this uh, these live videos as the. Uh, as the way to predict what is happening with the market or what is happening with the interest rates. Our goal over here is to inform everybody on the options that they currently have in the market. It is strictly individual. Everybody's situation is unique. And the best thing that we can do, we can give you general information so that uh, after watching our live, after watching our videos, after watching us on YouTube, you're more than welcome to contact myself, to contact David, sit down with us, discuss your financial situation, discuss your goals, discuss what your, like, what your circumstances are so that we could, uh, we could help you. Uh, we could help you and advise you and show you what you can do. We're not making the predictions. We're not making the decisions for you guys. All we can do is provide you with the information. We study the market. We study the news. We're telling you what is going on. And uh, 
We're not looking into the future. We're looking into the past. We're analyzing the numbers and the, uh, the, our experiences from the past, but we're not predicting. We're not predicting. You know, like the fact, uh, the fact that every, every four years before the president elections, our, um, the interest rates go down. This is what has been happening magically. magically. For many, many years, and we have the data showing it. If you look at the interest rates, at the interest rates for, through the last 40 years, and you actually look at the interest rates for the election years, it will show you, the data will show you that the interest rates were going down. Does that guarantee that uh, in 2024, right before the elections, our interest rates are going to go down? Not necessarily, but we know that there is a pattern and we hope that the pattern is going to actually perform and follow. Yeah, and I mean, like, there are a lot of changes, guys. Nobody could have predicted the, uh, nobody could have predicted the uh, pandemic, COVID situation, the pandemic, okay? But we absolutely knew that when the interest rates were significantly down when they were almost by the zero we knew that we're going to pay the price and what what is happening right now this is the price that we're paying for the three percent interest rate please don't hate on the people who actually uh, have the opportunity to refinance their homes or who actually took the uh took the opportunity and bought the homes during the pandemic with the low interest rates let's not hate on those people because they're those people are over 72% of the country, the people with the interest rates that are lower than 5%. So let's not think about that. Let's think how we can get you into the homes right now. And there are plenty of opportunities. And David, I would want to ask you if, uh, if you would be willing to next time to talk to us about the arms, um, the uh, five-year arms and seven-year arms. Uh, I know they're scary. I know a lot of people like have, you know, like have their stomachs turning when they hear the arms because they uh, like. Or I think arms were the ones that hurt people the most during the uh, default of 2008. <coughs> but would you be willing to talk to us about the arms so next time? Yes and no. Yes, because I can explain what they are. No, because uh, the ARM products that I currently have are not necessarily better than the 30-year products that I have. I know most people are expecting and used to ARMs being cheaper, and they're ready to consider um, being asked. Some lenders have an in-house ARM. Um, that will be somewhat maybe a tenth or quarter percent cheaper than the 30-year fixed. That's not the case with brokers, and I'm a broker, and the 119 lenders that we work with, banks that we work with, do not offer arms that are cheaper. So um, I could talk to you in theory what it is, but unfortunately, I... Uh, you don't have... You don't have a superior product. You don't have a superior arm product that clients that the 30 year fixed product is better. And honestly, I, I believe in it too. And I think that it is important for everybody to know that uh, when you hear, especially from your friends and family or at the barbecue from, from your neighbor who is a baker across the street, that ARM is the loan to go for right now, Remember, he is a baker for a reason. So, just uh, you know, like just consult the professional and ask the professional. Like, uh, talk to professional. Give them your financials and actually sit down and compare what different loans get you offered and what your outcome is going to be. Because one of the things that uh, 
the industry strives for and what we're here for to do for you guys is to clarify it can be very easy to get lost through the numbers and when people are like everybody concentrates like interest rate interest rate interest rate but uh, the truth is that a lot of companies that offer you the interest rate the low interest rate they're charging your arm and leg for that interest rate and you thinking that oh I'm gonna work with this company because their interest rate is lower than everybody else on the market and what they're not telling you or what they're not telling you up front like they will disclose it to you eventually 30 days into the purchase that you know like you're purchasing this interest rate but what they're not telling you up front is that you're being charged and the reality could be were you to go to any of the lenders across the street, which there is a great choice of, you could have been purchasing the same interest rate at a sure. lower, uh, for a lower amount. And the, the reason why those, uh, why those lenders are not disclosing it to you properly up front is because they know if you compare the real numbers, you're not going to continue working with those lenders. And uh, that happens a lot, especially when you are going with the online lenders where you don't even get to see that person, like look into their eyes. They just, you know, like they just keep sending you the paperwork. And this is not how you should be going through the process of purchasing the house or obtaining the loan is when the paperwork gets shuffled to you and you put the electronic signature on it without reading it and understanding what it means. Because a lot of times, guys, and this is true, we can deny it all day long, but we do it as a professionals as well. We get used to this paperwork. Like, we get used to this paperwork. We know usually what it means, but still, when you get this paper and you're like, oh my God, 40 pages, I, who has time to read through 40 pages? Can I change anything about it? No, I cannot, so I just snap my signature on it, and only then I figure it out that there was a clause in there that I volunteered like $12,000 of my own money to buy down that interest rate. I mean, like it's... The Black it Mirror happened. episode. Yeah. I mean, like, it just it just happened to uh, to a friend of mine who is a realtor. She is a realtor in a different state, and and, uh, and she was saying, "I can't believe it! Like I could not believe the statement." I was like, you're a realtor. You should have known better. Like, you don't have the loan officer that you work with. She's like, but they gave me the the lower yeah. rate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. So now she is $12,000 out of the pocket. And when she asked her lender who she actually works with, what would be her buy down? And her real, like her lenders told her her buy down, like the same buy down with that would be like, 8700 so that's uh, that's knowing your numbers that's having the information at your hands guys it's not like we we will not be always offering you the the best solution ever but at least we offer you the information so you could compare and you could decide for yourself what is the best for you that's so David I agree. Absolutely. Absolutely. Know your numbers. Work with the professional that you like. Work with your friendly neighborhood loan officer. And uh, yes. And work with somebody who actually, uh, who is going to explain you what you're, what you're doing, explain you the process. Because it's, um, the question is, everybody, like, nobody loves to, like, who My question to everybody is like, who likes to call the bank and talk to the automated system, phone system? If you you guys are into doing it, like if this is your favorite activity to call any, like any big company, any uh, any bank and start talking to the automated uh, phone system, then online banking or like online uh, Borrowing like online mortgage companies, same thing. Like you can uh, utilize Zillow and Open Door. 
or rent them to find your house. Like if this is what you like to do, if you like the automated messaging system to communicate with you, if you want zero human impact and if you want zero human care about what you're doing, where you are going to live, if the house is good, if the house is not good, then go ahead and use the you know like use those online services. If you actually want a human being to care where you live. To care that the house is actually in the place where your family is going to be the most comfortable. If you want the loan officer to care that you get absolutely the best deal on the market, that you are not overpaying for the ferociously overpaying for the buy down, or if you were decided to pay for one, it actually makes sense and that you are going to get your money out. Like this is important, and that is only done through the human being, through the loan, for the professional loan officer or the realtor, and that's why David and I are here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, David. Thank great, you for your talk. time, as always. Great talk. Enjoy your wonderful, beautiful, sunny weather in Washington, and. Looks absolutely lush outside of your window. I personally come to you know like part of the part of my uh, uh, joy of coming onto this podcast is looking through your window <laughs> to see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fun. Yeah, it's looking through your window because it is truly beautiful. And thank you so much for your thank time. You so much. As always, I am posting all of the uh, contact information. If you guys have questions, feel free to reach out to us. Especially if you are interested in this new loan or any construction loan whatsoever, contact David. He will tell you all of the details, and he will go through the details、uh, for your particular situation, for your particular financial goals and needs. And、uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Alexandra, thank you so much. Have、thank、a wonderful、you. day. You too. Bye bye. Bye.